Question number four. All right, so question number four. Uh, find the point on the line y equals 2x plus 3 that is closest to the origin 0, 0. Okay. Uh, so the junior tutor, they first uh, explain to us what the distance equation is, or the distance formula. And the distance formula helps us to find the, the absolute magnitude, I guess, between two points All right, uh, on the Cartesian plane. Okay. So our distance formula, uh, we're going to write it as d equals the square root of the x, x2 of the second point minus x1 of the first point squared plus y squared or y2 y1 squared. And that's the square root, okay? Um, so this is the distance formula for any two points on the curve where x2, y, y2 is one point and x1, y1 is another point, okay? All right, so we're going to use this distance formula to derive a new formula to relate any point of our line y to the origin. So relate the distance between any point of our line y to the origin, okay? So let's say that um, we're going to let x, y be any point on y equals 2x plus 3, okay? So the distance from x of y to 0, 0 can be explained as d equals x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Okay, so we're assuming that x and y is a point on y equals 2x plus 3, and the distance of that point to zero to the origin is given by that equation, okay? So if we simplify this, we just get root of x squared plus y squared, okay? Uh, but since y, y, y is equal to 2x plus 3, we're going to sub that in. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 3 squared, okay? And this is now our de derived uh, uh, equation or function to relate any points on the curve to the origin in terms of distance, okay? So this is our, our function, all right? Um, so let's say that a point uh, 1 and 6, or 1 and 5 on, the, on, on our graph, y equals 2x plus 3, then if we plug it into here, we can find the distance between 1 and 5 and 0, 0, okay? So this is our function. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the critical points of this function. So we're going to derive this function and we're going to try to find its critical points. And we're guaranteed that this critical point is going to give us the, um, the closest point to the origin because uh, if you think about this uh, function, this function has uh, calculates the distance between the point on the line and the origin, right? So that that distance can be as large as you want, but there's only one value that can be as small as it can. So if we find the critical point on our uh, function here, then we can find our uh, point of the line that's closest to the origin. Okay. So the critical point again it relates to the point on the on our function where the uh, tangent of the line or the slope of the line or the rate of change of that line of that function is zero. Okay, so that's where we're going to find our minimum. Okay, so let's derive this equation. So d of d over in terms of x is so this is going to be a, a chain function or chain rule. So we're going to do the outside function first. Uh, so that's going to be one over two. Um, I should have expanded this first actually too. Let me expand this and make it easier. So this is x squared plus 4x squared plus 12x plus 9, okay? Which equals to 5x squared plus 12x plus 9, okay? So this is going to be um, five x squared plus 12x plus 9. Uh, 
with a negative uh, one root negative one and a half. And then the, in, the derivative of the inside is just going to be derivative of 5x squared plus 12x plus 9, which is going to be 10x plus 12. Okay. Um, yeah. So now we are going to um, reduce this and write it out in a more interpretable form here. So we have uh, 5x plus 6 over, oh, it should be 10. Sorry, it should be 10. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm doing something wrong here. Um, sorry, because uh, when you expand this, it's uh, 10x, not 12x. Be 10, so this should be, um, Five, okay. and this is going to be root of 5x squared plus 10x plus 9, okay? So this should be a 10. Okay, cool. All right, so what is our critical uh, points here? Uh, so our critical points is when d of dx equals to 0. So let me write that down here. So when d of dx equals to 0, we have, um, so when you're calculating a derivative that is a quotient of functions, you really only need to pay attention to the numerator because the numerator dictates when uh, the whole function equals to zero, okay? Uh, because if this numerator is zero, then the whole function is zero, okay? So we're gonna just assume, we're gonna just gonna embrace that fact and we're gonna find the zero for the numerator. So. 5x plus 5 equals to 0, which equals 5x negative 5, and that equals to negative 1. x equals negative 1, okay? Cool. All right, so we have found our critical point, which is x equals negative 1. At x equals negative 1 on our function, uh, on our distance function, that's where the rate of change equals to 0. And when the rate of change equals to zero, we are guaranteed to either have a max, a min, or a saddle point, I guess you can say. Um, so we know that is going to be a minimum value because of how our, um, our distance function relates to the line, okay? So the distance can vary infinitely in distance and magnitude, right? That's the maximum distance. But the minimum distance, there's only going to be one mi minimum distance that is going to be the smallest value from the line to the origin, okay? But to mathematically, uh, and to prove this, to mathematically compute this, we'll have to use a second derivative test to prove that this is a minimum, okay? To finish with our solution, because we can't just say, oh, after we find the critical point, we reason that because of the nature of our function and what our function is graphing, that this is a minimum point. So we'll have to find our second derivative here, and we have to use a second derivative test, okay? All right, so because we have to use a second derivative test, we're going to need this to derive this a second time, okay? And that's where the quotient rule comes in. So let me uh, pan down more. We need a lot more room here. Uh, let me just take a look at our function here too. All right, so um, d squared of d of dx would equal to, um, dang, this is going to be huge. Uh, so, Five, okay, let's write this first here. So I'm gonna write um, five x plus five prime. I know that's not convention. Actually, you know, I'll just write this. Five x plus five times um, this big guy here. Five x squared plus 10 x plus nine minus uh, d of dx of 5x squared plus 10x plus 9 um, uh, times 5x plus 5. And we also have a um, square here.
Cool. So let's derive this, I guess, for a bit. Um, so this is going to be uh, 5 times 5x squared plus 10x plus 9 minus um, 1 over 2 of 5x squared plus 10x plus 9 negative half times 5x plus 5. Okay, so this is a pretty big function. And we also have 5x squared plus 10x plus 9. Okay. All right, so we're not going to simplify this. We're just going to plug in negative 1 here. And we're going to find what our value here is. Okay. Okay, uh, let me pan down a little more too. Okay, so uh, uh, d, uh, double or the second derivative of d of dx would equal to 5. Uh, so 5 minus 10 is 5. Four, so root two or two. Okay, so five times uh, five times negative one squared is just five minus ten is negative five plus nine is four. Root of four is two. All right, we're going to need to plug negative one here too, which is going to be uh, one over four. So this is gonna this is also gonna to equal to four, I guess. Uh, and because, but it's also rooted, so it's gonna be two. It's on the bottom, so it's gonna be minus uh, zero. Oh thank goodness that's zero. <laughs> and um, this bottom one is gonna to, to be uh, negative one, five, four. Okay, so it's gonna be Four. Hopefully, I get something. Okay. Um, let me just see what I did wrong here. Um, 4x squared, 10x9, 5x squared. Okay. Um, six plus six. Okay, so I don't, I need to check this person's math, the junior tutor's math, uh, but we got two different numbers here. They got uh, three times root two over two is greater than zero, and I got 10 over four. Um, so I need to check this person's math here. Um, one. Okay, hold on. Let me calculate this first. Negative 2, 1, um, 1, plus 1 is root 2. Okay, root 2. Negative 2 plus 1, 1. Okay, that's root 2 times root 3. Um, this is going to be 3 times negative 3 is 0. So this whole thing is zero. Oh, I think I know what I did wrong here. Uh, so I forgot to derive the inside function two here. Uh, it, sh it shouldn't matter though, because you're timesing it by zero. Um, okay, well in any case, uh, I'll try to calculate this again. Um, but. We see here that our our value for uh, x of negative one of our uh, second derivative of our uh, distance function is greater than zero. So now we know that it's concave up, and because it's concave up, we know that the minimum is that our x equals negative one is a minimum. Okay. Um, so let's write a concluding statement here. Since um, D x of negative one is greater than zero. We know that 
x equals negative 1 is a minimum. Okay, so now the final piece of the puzzle is to calculate what this is x equals negative 1 is on the line. So we're just going to plug it into our equation here. So y equals 2 times negative 1 plus 3, and that equals to 1. So now we know that uh, negative 1, 1 is the closest point to the origin. All right, uh, so I'll recalculate this uh, derivative um, again uh, off the screen, and then I'll correct the solution based on whether or not it's correct or not, okay? So we'll say the solution is correct for now. Okay. okay. Sorry about that, guys.